you want your life to have more faith, more power, more impact, you're going to enjoy my guest today. Gwen Smith loves connecting with women around the world. Co-founder of Girlfriends in God, Gwen is a talented speaker, author, songwriter, and worship leader. Gwen's desire is to teach ladies to not merely accept the huge gap between the reality of everyday life and the enormous promises of God, but rather to hope, believe, and seize the very best life God wants for His children. I'm so excited for you to meet Gwen Smith. It's great to be here. Thank you so much. Well, my opening line, So You Want It All. <laughs> <laughs> that's the name of your book, I Want It All. It's a little bold, right? That's really bold. That's like I said, that's going for it. <laughs> Bring it on. Why did you write this book? I wrote this book because um, um, there's just this gap between our reality, my reality, my struggles, and God's mm -hmm. promises. And so. Just my awareness of that, this, okay, I see what you say here in, in the word, God, but how can I access that in my life? So it became this journey of the pursuit of connecting the power and promises and the will of God that, that he speaks of in the word and in the realities and struggles of my life. Yeah. I mean, some Christians, it seems like they just stop even believing that God's promises, that we're able to experience them. Yes. Where do you stand on that? Well, I stand with the word. And in fact, I, um, this morning I, I brought my, my journal up here because this morning I was thinking about that question. And Paul says to the church of Ephesians, I love that, that promise that we see where he, he prays for the church in chapter three. And we know that, that, that we would know the, the, uh, the God who, who loves us with this wide and deep yeah. and high and, and, and long love. But then he prays um, knowing in, in, in full knowledge that God is an, a, a God who can do exceedingly and abundantly more than we ask or imagine. And it's so exciting. It, it makes you just want to go, yes, that's the one I want. <laughs> and so this morning I turned in, in the word and I just looked over Ephesians one, because this was Paul's message to encourage the church of Ephesus. And I just started saying, okay, if, if I want to do it, to tell you the heart of I want it all, then I go to the word. And I love it because Paul, um, in, in just chapter one of Ephesians, he says that I pray according to, I, I come on behalf, according to the will of God. And this is a message to the believers. Mm -hmm. And it's that they would experience grace and peace in Jesus. And, and he just keeps rephrase, repeating that phrase in Christ. And um, he gives blessing to God. And he tells us that we already have every spiritual blessing in Christ. And so I want it all is this journey to every spiritual blessing in Christ. It is not some fluffy um, pursuit of, of everything to make my life happy. It's to, it is a, a deep um, and meaningful pursuit to make my life submit to the will of God to experience the fullness of his blessing. So mm, that's very good. You know, it's different when the, what the world says is joy yeah. is very different than what the and word. They never seem to find it. They keep chasing joy. something, yes. and chasing something. And they don't get anywhere. And, and the more they accumulate, the de more depressed they seem to get. Exactly. And we're not immune to that in, in the church nope. and in faith. And so it's um, a dusting off of dreams of of sorts, and yeah. and and just um, I want to just be in the ear of the reader, saying, "Come on, girl, you could do this. Look at what the word says. All right, this is your inheritance. This is your promise. Yeah. And we're not intended to be weak, weak people. We are we are intended to, in the struggles, in the grit, um, walk in the grace and in the strength of Christ. And you were telling me in the green room that when you speak to uh, groups of women, that probably a third are struggling with some kind of brokenness. Mm. Talk to me about that. What do you mean? Okay, when I speak to women, all of us are struggling with brokenness. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Um, but, um, but my story, and, and whenever I share anything, I always let listeners know that I am standing on a platform of grace. Yeah. Because my story, um, it, simply put, is that I was raised in a, in a good home and went to a Bible-believing church, and I came to know Christ 
as my savior as a little girl, you know, in those plastic Sunday school chairs when yeah. Mr. Dunn would put the flannel graph lesson up. Um, and, and I just knew based upon the gospel that I needed um, to be forgiven yeah. of my sins in order to know Christ and, and or to know, to know the Lord and be, sep- you know, connected to him. Um, and so I loved that. And then as a teenager, I pursued Christ and, and started to take on faith as my own, um, went to church camp, all that fun stuff yeah. and really grew. And then I went off to college um, and, and started to just really um, be a subtle prodigal of sorts where I would just make one compromise after another that was clearly outside of God's will for me. And by my junior year, this, this good Christian girl ended up in, um, with an unplanned pregnancy in an abortion clinic. Wow. And that radically changed my life. Um, Leon, if you would have told me that that was going to be my, my, my life and my story, that I would have gone there, I would have said, that will never be me. Yeah. And yet, in my depravity and my choices led me to that place of death. And, um, and so for a season, uh, my, I was just destroyed. And it was all secret because no one knew. And no one knew that, that my, my boyfriend and I at the time were um, intimately, you know, that good Christian girls aren't supposed to be doing that. And so that was a secret. Then the pregnancy becomes a secret. Then the abortion becomes a secret. And then at that point, I felt like I had um, really stepped out of God's plan for my life and that I wrecked all of the plan. And, um, and so I didn't want any part of his healing or forgiveness. I, I kind of stiff-armed God for a while. And it was, it was a place of brokenness, despair. Um, and darkness that my heart just never knew. And, um, and I love uh, the fact that God didn't leave me there, and that's no. where my hope lies, and that's, and that's where my you, story what, what becomes everyone's story. What was it that made story. you turn? What was it that finally got through to you in all that pain and hurt? You know, God used people, yeah. um, conversations with the roommate, um, sermons, because I would still go to church. I yeah. just didn't, I just, there was a separation between my heart and, and, and the redemption of the Lord. And, um, and it was in the, in the story of the prodigal, I love the phrase, it's, it says, when he came to his senses, <clears throat> yeah. he, went, he, he went back to his father. And that was me. When I came to my senses, when I... <sighs> Were you raised in a legalistic church that was just judgmental? I was not raised in a judgmental church, but I was raised in a church um, where I knew the word and I knew God's will for me and I knew that I had stepped out of it and I had messed things up. And, and, it, and like, I think a part of the... it was my own judgment on me. Yeah, exactly. I didn't want the forgiveness. I didn't deserve it. Right. You were beating yourself up. Oh, my gosh, yes. I was beating myself up because I couldn't reconcile who I was with who I was supposed to be. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I just felt the whispers of the Lord saying, come back, come back. And, and so when I came to my senses, when I fell before him and just um, poured out my heart to him, yeah. um, he forgave me. And then wow. the healing took time. And, and that's the one third of all of the women that I speak to. Um, they have that same story of brokenness. Um, and so many of us just need to know um, that it's not that we deserve forgiveness, but that God's grace is not about what we deserve. It's about what Christ did for us. Yeah. And he is all about restoration. He is all about healing. And he's all about full, abundant life. Um, and it's not because we deserve it. It's because he loves us. You know, when I think about the story of the prodigal son, I always see the father standing and gazing longingly down the road. Yeah waiting for a son to come back. And we don't have any indication in the word of him addressing his son with a list of the things he did wrong. Right. You know, nailing him, <clears throat> excuse me, but literally loving him. He doesn't stand with his hands on his hips and go, I can't believe. <laughs> That's not the God we serve. Mm-mm. The father we see in that picture, which is just a story that Jesus told, is a father who runs to love. Yeah. And, and even as a parent, I mean, I have three kids, three tall teenagers, and, um, and when they, you know, when they admit and come with this contrite heart, like, I have messed up, that my heart is, is I want healing. I want to restore this. I know when I was younger, it always, whenever I would go to pray, I always thought that the Holy Spirit's job was to confront me with all of my issues mm. and then fix it before I could really talk with God. Mm. And so prayer became this not enjoyable thing because your own heart condemns you. Yes. And it would be, you didn't do this, you didn't bring your parents, you didn't do this right, you should have done that, you didn't do it. And it was like, it was a real awful thing. And then one day I began to recognize that Holy Spirit's job when you're a believer is literally proved to you that God's grace has made you righteous. It's a gift. Yes. And And that he loves you the way you are and his power Mm. will help you become what he wants you to become.
Absolutely, and it's, the Bible says that it's his kindness that yeah. leads us to repentance. Oh. And, and, and in his love is how we, we experience the fullness of that, because in, in Ephesians also, Paul says that he wants us to be rooted and established in the love of God. And if you look at the word rooted, it's, it's rizzo in the Greek, and that actually means to fix. Yeah. We want, we're fixed in the love of God. You know, when you think about the word love, there's, it's hard to define for mm. us because I love puppies, I love poodles, I love my <laughs> wife, right. I love God, I love hunting. Like the word love is used so much. Yes. One of the words, the definitions that really help me is that it means to value. Mm -hmm. So when God loves me, he values me. Because it's hard for us to think that we're valuable because all we think about are our faults, how we don't measure up. Everyone else's skills and gifts always look better than yes. ours but he just values us. And I talk about that and I want it all because that's essential to us um, not only experiencing all God has for us on a heart level, but then making an impact for him. Value is so hugely good. important. Well, let's take a break here. When we come back, I want to hear a little more out of this book. My guest today, Gwen, wrote this book, I Want It All. <laughs> we'll be right back. If you believe in the Word of God, um, you have to believe that your sin and the things that you have experienced and choices you've made does not fall outside the scope of God's grace to forgive. We believe Jesus Christ came to give every person on this planet a chance to live with power, passion, and purpose. Through award-winning, world-class TV programs like this and life-giving resources in Spanish, French, Italian, Russian, and Hindi, Spirit Contemporary is changing lives around the world. Considerable expenses are involved, but each person reached is absolutely worth the cost. People are saved, their faith revived, eternities transformed, all because of your support. With your donation today, you will receive today's special resource. Church. God created church for you to have a home, a family, and a purpose. It's a place where we can connect with each other, where everyone should find love, acceptance, and forgiveness. But the church is not a building. It isn't the brick, the doors, stained glass, or the steeples. It's the people. We fill it with life and laughter. We are the church, and we can meet online from anywhere in the world. Let's connect at Springs Online today. Get social with Leon Fontaine. Follow him on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. With instant access through any mobile device, you can stay up to date with the latest news, comment on your favorite episodes, and watch insider sneak peeks. Bonus videos, inspirational posts, and practical teaching are just clicks away. Spirit Contemporary Social Media. Get social with Leon Fontaine. Welcome back. My guest today is Gwen Smith, who wrote this book, I Want It All. Now, we were talking a little bit about your testimony mm. and how that, that brought you to a place of reaching out to God from a place of being broken. Do you think sometimes that when we can't rely on our own gifts, skill, pride, strength, that we just come to Him in this place of being? When you reach the end of yourself mm -hmm. is when you hit more power than you ever imagined. I think it's in the desperation that we sometimes recognize our need to, to get past our own strength, if you will, which is such a misperception. Yeah. Um, I do. I. Um, one of the questions that is the big question that I get asked after I share my testimony is, is how did you forgive yourself? And it's mm. always by the, you know, the women who, who that is their biggest struggle. And I'll just say, you know, um, if you believe in the word of God, 
um, you have to believe that your sin and the things that you have experienced and choices you've made does not fall outside the scope of God's grace to forgive. And if he has forgiven, who are we not to? And that becomes a big hurdle. Um, and that's where it has to be by faith. It's not easy. It, because our tendency is to beat ourselves up. Yeah. Um, and we deserve, <laughs> I deserve the punishment, but that is the story of the gospel, is that it is, is Jesus took it on, on my yeah. behalf, on your behalf, so that we don't have to experience the weight. Um, and there's still, there's still, you know, I, consequences, mm -hmm. you know, and it, and it still will always be my, my choice um, of that would be my biggest regret. And I wish that I had not, uh, that I stayed tight to the will of God in that season of my life. Um, but going back into the past, the word regret is a really useless word. Yeah. Like there's nothing you're going to be able to change yeah. about your past, but there's everything you can change about your future. And God can use everything. Sure he can. So the enemy, like, you know, the Bible, I'm a firm believer the enemy has got no power, but he's a crazy and a brilliant crazy guy at mm -hmm. accusing us yes. and making us go back to the place in our past where we're the most defeated. Yes. Because whenever, you know, they say the heart is the seat of your identity. And I find that whenever we start thinking about doing more for God or who am I, mm -hmm. the accuser of the brethren will take you back to the worst time of your yes. life because that's, he wants that to be your identity. Yes. But your identity in Christ, and you were telling me in the green room, how many times in the Bible it talks about in him. Yes. And if God can make himself forget, it does take time. But I'll bet you even today, if you wanted to, you could go back in your mind and rewind to the shame, the heartache, the brokenness, and begin to lose your future anytime you want. So it's constantly staying in the Word yes. and in relationship with Jesus. Am I right? 100%. <laughs> yeah. um, the Word strengthens us. Um, it reminds me of a story when I was, I actually start the book off with this story. When my kids were little, I don't know about y'all, but we love tuck and time. You know, at night, because I don't know, you just get this tender little window. You get to see through this window of your child's heart. Yep. And one day when my daughter Kennedy was just seven or eight, I had walked into her bedroom and she sat up and she was braiding her hair. She had just learned how to braid her hair on her own. It's a big deal for a girl. And um, so she started braiding her hair and she said, Mom, I know what I want to be when I grow up. And I was like, oh, awesome. And so I sat down beside her and I was like, tell me. And she goes, I want to be a beautritionist. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that was hilarious. And so um, my mom, I'm, I'm like, okay, well, tell me about that. Do you mean that you want to um, make women look pretty and do their hair and their makeup? And, and she's like, yes. I'm like, okay, well, that is so cool. That actually is beautician. I was like, but here's what's so cool about that word you made up. You also put in nutritionist. And so while a beautician is someone who makes people look pretty on the outside and make sure they, you know, they look, mm -hmm. then a nutritionist is someone who's concerned about the wellness on the inside. So if you can do that, if you can grow up to be a woman who helps other women feel good and look good on the outside, but is also concerned about wellness on the inside, then, then let's both be beautricianists. That's a good girl. <laughs> and so I loved that word. And I knew that if I didn't um, go write it down, I was going to lose it. I don't know, my brain, shh, it'll just drop things. So I went down and got my journal. I started writing that story, thinking that was so cute and giggly, you know. And it was one of those times where God just knocked on the door of my heart and is like, hello, Gwen, do you see um, what's going on here? What she's really saying is, I want to have a great life. I want it to, to be filled with beauty. And, and she was sharing her dreams with me. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the I want it all journey um, is, is to get past the kinks um, in our lives where we won't forgive ourselves, um, to, to be reminded to go back to the Word so that we can dust off our heart dreams, to believe um, that though we are imperfect, we serve a perfect God who can provide the strength, the grace, the joy that we do need um, so that then we can pursue the dreams that He has for us, the plan that He has for us that is good, that is for us, um, but it's according to His will and for Him. So, so it's, good. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's about dusting off some heart dreams as well. When you talk to, you know, you were mentioning earlier in our interview that going to the university, going on to there, that 
everything seemed fine, mm -hmm. and then you did things you never dreamed you would do. This is way off in left field question off our content today, but <laughs> when you look at that, is there anything that you would do as a parent to prepare your kids for university yes, that maybe would them, have helped? Lock them up from 18 to 25. <laughs> <laughs> and throw away the key. Ah! No, you know what we've done, um, because what I usually don't share um, is that my college boyfriend is my husband. Okay. Um, and God has brought restoration to our lives. Um, I just, and we're just, that is the only he could do. Yeah. Um, and so we have raised them um, in a different temperament. Um, we've raised them with the purpose, with even dating, um, the purpose of dating is to find mm -hmm. a mate, not just to have someone to do th things with. Um, we're a little countercultural that way, if you will. Okay, yeah. really countercultural. Totally. And we've told them they know, um, they know that they have um, a sibling in heaven waiting to meet them, who probably looks just like them. Mm -hmm. And um, and so we've been really upfront. We let them know of all right. So we thought we were strong enough for this, but we weren't. God's plan was this, and we did this, and. Um, we want God's best for them, so we're really all about um, equipping them with the skills to process according to God's plan mm -hmm. and for their lives. Uh, we're just really honest. Very cool. Authentic, open, mm -hmm. being real. I think kids are so smart. When they hit about yeah. eight, <laughs> you're through right? and kind of, I know. you better just be authentic and real because they're, re they're going to read you. Because I said so. It doesn't work anymore. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> when you go to the Word, we got a, few, a couple minutes left. People are listening to this, and of course, there's so many people who have done things in their lives yeah. that they can't seem to break free from. Born again, going to church, yeah. great families, yet in a second, your mind can go to any place in your path. and go back 40 years in a nanosecond and be experiencing the same pain, the same heartache, the same brokenness, and never seem to get through it. How do you do devotions, or what do you do in your daily time with God? Any, what do you want to say in closing to them about how to break free? Okay, breaking free is never going to be some perfect and simple formula, I'll say that. So mm -hmm. don't expect it to be easy. Um, we're all going to have battles. I would say spiritual disciplines are very important. And by that I mean um, it's going to look different to all of us, especially in the seasons of life. If you're a young mom, your time with the Lord is going to look very different than if you're um, if you're a woman who is in a professional workplace or in retirement age, you know, but it's about this constant pursuit of, of the hope of Christ through the word of God. So for me, um, I want to start off with just reading from the Psalms or Proverbs and just gather some, some inspiration and, 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 and just get in the word first. Then I want to go to him with my journal because I want my desires to be in alignment with his desires. Um, it's about worship, even when it's hard. Mm -hmm. and, and Brad and I, um, my husband battled cancer a few years ago, and we talked, I talk about that briefly in the book. And one of the lessons we learned um, is the spiritual discipline of gratitude, hmm. is even when things are grave, we can have gratitude, and there's power in that. Totally. The Bible tells us that all the time. And so if, if you go to the Word and, and, and you look to see what we're called to in Christ, um, just connect that. And I, and I pray responsively in the word too. And I think there's a lot of power in that. Mm -hmm. So if it says, um, you know, give thanks, pray, pray often. Okay, Lord, I'm struggling to give thanks right now. And I <laughs> see that you call me to this in the word, in the word. So, okay, right now I give thanks that, um, that, that I have the word in front of me. I give thanks that your promises are mine. I give, and so it's just about like putting it into practice right? and connecting it to, so to my struggles. Thank you for being with us today. It's, I've loved it. Thank you. My guest today was Gwen Smith, who wrote this book, I Want It All. I want to encourage you to get a copy. We'll be right back. Devoted, a daily devotional created with you in mind. Easy to read and simple to understand. These two-minute faith boosters are available in eight different languages. Watch it on YouTube or have the booklet sent directly to your home. You can also receive Devoted to your email inbox daily. Become inspired as Leon Fontaine shares practical biblical teaching. Devoted is literally at your fingertips. Transform your life with this spirit contemporary devotional. Sign up to receive Devoted today.
What a touching interview today. What I love from today's topic is the importance of letting Holy Spirit work inside you. You know, God is a heart God. He built us and He knows what we need. Part of a spirit contemporary life is recognizing that we need to be spiritually strong. How do we do that? Well, we were talking a little bit today about what do you believe? You know, a lot of us, we grow up with certain beliefs that we get from failures. We get from people who speak into our lives who mean well. But we get all of these beliefs deep on the inside of us that tell us kind of who we are and what we can do. And they totally limit us. What Holy Spirit wants to do is He wants to show us that we're made in the likeness and the image of God and that we can do anything that the Word of God says we can do. One of the verses of the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The other part about being spirit contemporary is besides being spiritually alive and powerful, we need to be relevant and authentic and contemporary, able to connect with the people that God has called us to reach. That's why it's so urgent for us to get this the gospel out there. But you know, a lot of people think that they're they're preaching the gospel and they can be condescending, judgmental, they can come down on people and they wonder why the world begins to back away from them. The Bible says that it's the goodness of God that leads a man to repentance. And to be spirit contemporary is to be spiritually alive, yet at the same time to be contemporary, relevant, and begin to share with people how amazing, how great God is, how much He loves them. I'd love to have you you. Work with us today. You know, for a gift of $30 or more, you're going to take this message, this beautiful message of Jesus, but in a spirit contemporary way to the world. And the world is so open. We live in a day and an age right now where people are hungry. Everyone thinks they're closed to the gospel. Millions are coming to know the Lord all around this planet in so many different languages. Your gift today is going to put people's names in the Lamb's Book of Life. And you know, if you'd partner with us for $30 or more, I'd love to send you as a thank you this CD series, Unleashing the Miraculous. Go to your phone, be a part of something amazing around this planet. We trust that you are being blessed, uplifted, and encouraged in your Christian walk through today's program. As a viewer, you should know that we care about you. We value you greatly and appreciate your prayers. Did you know that Miracle Channel is taking the good news of Jesus Christ around the world through award-winning programs like this? We are actively translating ministry programs into languages like Spanish, French, Italian, and even Russian. We even air on television stations in the Middle East. This means that millions upon millions of people are hearing about Jesus Christ in their language, and it's all thanks to people like you. Considerable expenses are involved, so we need your support because each person who gives their life to Jesus is absolutely worth the cost. Each is of infinite value to God. You are very important to us. We care greatly about your spiritual growth, which is why we would like to get today's resources into your hands. When you support this program by making a donation, you are not only enriching your walk with the Lord, you are sharing Jesus with someone on the other side of the globe your donation transforms lives by reaching literally millions of people with the gospel. Call now and change someone's life today. Tomorrow, Leon and Bill Purvis discuss the difference between choosing fear and faith. But when you're walking down a beach, you'll see a lot of crab shells. It doesn't mean that the crab is dead. Most of the time it means the crab is alive and made a break for it.